I'd imagine that you've just stumbled across this video because you're in the market for a secondhand drone and you're probably overwhelmed by the whole process because drones are pretty expensive. And I just wanna make sure that people know what to look for, what things to be aware of, and just to make sure that you know what you're getting your hands on if you are gonna get yourself a secondhand drone. What's going on guys, my name is Dan Davis and I'm the creative director here on danstube.tv which is Australia's number one ranked drone YouTube channel. I'm also the course creator over on the Fearless Drone Academy which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. Make sure to use the code danstube over there if you do want to get the drone course you will save some money and I think if you're a beginner, if you get yourself a secondhand drone and you're terrified of flying, this is the right time to get yourself the course because it's going to help you become more confident as a drone pilot. I did a few like revisits on the channel for the Mini 3 and the Mini 2. And I found a lot of people were talking about picking up a secondhand drone. And I just kind of had a lot of red flags pop up because I've sold a lot of secondhand drones now on Facebook Marketplace. And a lot of people just rock up and they don't even like do the whole process of checking the drone. But you really should be aware of a lot of different things. A lot of it will just be checking visually. Some of it will be checking as it's flying. So there'll be some auditory things to be aware of. And there's a bunch of other stuff that I'll help you out with in this video. Now, first things first, make sure you do your your research on the drone. Firstly, do the research on like all the different drones that are available. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Mini 3 Pro and DJI specifically. There are a bunch of other drones out there, so it will apply pretty much the exact same to all of those, but just make sure you research the drone. Like, what specs does it have? What does it offer? What are the features? You know, that kind of stuff. Be aware of what it is, the flight time on it, what different modes does it have? Active track, for example. Does it have obstacle avoidance? And this one's a big one, right? Because in this video, like I said, Mini 3 Pro is what I'm gonna be showing you. But the Mini 3 looks very similar. It just doesn't have obstacle avoidance sensors and it doesn't have active track. So you could buy yourself the Mini 3 thinking, oh yeah, it's got the same as the Mini 3 Pro, there's no difference. And maybe you've just done a very brief search and you found people in forums going, yeah, they're pretty much the same, you know, no major difference really. And then you've just gone with it and gone, oh, well, it must have all the features. This is what I mean by like, do your research, watch a bunch of YouTube videos, go around and talk on different Facebook groups, Reddit communities, just have a look around, you know, like actually do some research before you even invest in a drone because they're not cheap and you want to make sure you get the right one. I'm going to be showing you Facebook Marketplace. I've just typed in Mini 3 Pro and I'm just going to scroll through and show you what different offers are available. There's a bunch of Mini 3 Pros that are available and Marketplace is the standard for me. I'm based in Brisbane, Australia, but you know, it might be different for you in different countries. So just be aware of like what the standard is for buying something secondhand. First things first, type in Mini 3 Pro, type in drone, type in whatever model it is that you're looking for and just have a scroll through, see what's available. Make sure that you've got the location right. So I've got it set up in Brisbane. You can change the radius as well. You can adjust the filters as well as you need, but I'm just gonna scroll through what Marketplace is offering up to me and what it's suggesting. So I can see there's a bunch of different ones. There's a lot of different offers here. I'm gonna click on the first one, which is for a thousand dollars and it just says drone DJI mini 3 pro with extra battery you can see there's a few different photos in here looks like we've got the extra battery so that means you're gonna get two batteries you get a few little accessories in here and the drone and the controller as well so pretty good offer for a thousand dollars so first things first just scroll down and click on the description so read through the description see if there's anything in there that you might have any questions about I would say one thing that's quite important is being aware of how much flight time the drone has had because just like anything there's wear and and if the drone has flown for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, you just need to be aware of that. You know, are you willing to buy something with a bunch of hours on it when there might be an alternative with significantly lower hours? It's similar when you're looking at a car, right? You're going to look at the odometer and you're going to go, okay, well, these two cars are similar. One's got 50,000 less kilometers. I'm probably going to go for that one because theoretically there's going to be less wear and tear, less maintenance, less stuff that I have to deal with. Similar scenario here. A lot of drones do handle lots and lots of use and lots of flight. So it will be fine for a lot of situations, but just keep that in mind because it is applicable. And so with this first listing here, I can see they haven't even listed how many flight hours they've got. Maybe they don't know how to do that. And that's something I'll show you a little later in the video. But the next thing I would suggest is just clicking on their profile, right? Like have a look at their marketplace profile, see if they've sold other stuff in the past, just see how it's gone, how thorough they've been with the listings, how thorough they've been with the details and everything. This just indicates if they're like a real person firstly, that they're not a scammer. Look at their photo and then also go to their profile. I'm gonna blur some of this out just to kind of keep some confidentiality for this person. But what I would suggest is clicking on the see about section. So sometimes it actually 
actually tells you when they created their profile. Not for everyone, but sometimes you'll find that if someone's trying to scam you, they've only just set up that profile like four months ago or even a few months ago. Sometimes it's like a year. So if it's a profile that looks a little bit off and a little bit sus, just keep that in mind. And it's also good to just know what the person looks like when you're going to meet them in person. So they're the first few things. And then I'd suggest like continuing your research, seeing what else is available, seeing what other people are posting. Yeah, just sending a few messages to the people that you're interested in to see if it's still available. So here's an example of my profile here. You see, I've got 4.9 stars. I've got 38 ratings, so a reputable person. I've got a bunch of really positive reviews. So definitely look through the reviews if the person has a well published profile with a bunch of feedback on it. That's a good indicator just to see what their strengths are, to see what their reviews look like. And then scroll down and you can see I've got a bunch of stuff in here that says sold. Now, this is just going to help people see what I have sold and help them see that I am legit and that a bunch of this is sold. I've had some positive reviews. So keep an eye out for a profile like this because typically they're going to be very legit and they're going to have, you know, their stuff on lock, right? Like they're going to have a decent profile with a bunch of reviews. And that's kind of just a credibility check for you as you're scrolling through just to see what they've got going on, what they've sold in the past and all that good stuff. So definitely keep that in mind when you are looking at profiles because there will be a bunch of products, especially like I said, the Mini 3 Pro, just in my area, there's a bunch being sold. But if I extended it out to the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast, there'd be even more being listed because it is a drone that's being sold quite frequently at the moment. So just something to keep in mind, look around and don't just go with the first person that you see. There are a bunch of other options to pick up secondhand drones and there are refurbished drones out there. The D1 store actually have X demo drones. They're a little bit more premium in the sense that they've gone through a lot of different checks a lot of the time they're demo drones, so they haven't really flown much at all. They're in perfect condition. So there are a few options through the D1 store, but there's a bunch of other marketplaces as well. So just do your research and don't rush into it. A few questions I would suggest asking. Don't feel like you have to ask every single question. You know, some deals you look at them and you just go, that looks legit, looks like it's in great condition. The person sold a lot of other stuff in the past. I'm keen to at least go and check it out in a public area and see what the person's like, how the drone flies and all that kind of stuff. So these are some of the questions that immediately come to mind. First one is how many flight hours does the drone have? It's a great one. It just lets you know how many flights the drones had, lets you know how much wear and tear is on the drone. And I'll show you where to find that uh, in the actual setting. So maybe the person might not know and they might just deflect it a little bit and go, oh, I don't know how to find that. I can show you how to actually suggest it to them, whether you send them this video, or whatever, it might be an easy way to do it. Next question would be, have you crashed the drone before? You know, just straight up, have you crashed the drone before? Has the drone had any damage? That kind of stuff. Any repairs is always a good question. Have you had to send it in for any repairs before? Have there been any defects with the drone? Have you had any sort of issues that I might need to know about? That's a great one. Again, we don't know how legit everyone is, it's very easy to just lie about this stuff. But if they're genuine and if you see their profile and they've got a bunch of other stuff on there and they've been selling regularly, they're probably going to tell you the truth in that situation. So just ask that question just to find out. You know, it might not be a deal breaker. Maybe it has had a repair. Doesn't mean that the drone's bad by any means. Maybe it has had a repair. But it's just good to know that when you go in person, you can then inspect whatever has been repaired. The next question would be, when did you buy it? So, you know, that just gives you a scope of like when they actually purchased it, when they started flying the drone, just to give you a rough idea of how long they've been flying it for. This one's just a great one just to give you some background. And then the, the final question that I guess really stands out is why are you selling the drone? Someone might say, oh, I want to get an upgrade. Some person might say, I just don't fly it. It's just good to know. And don't feel like you have to ask every question, but these are just some clear questions that come to mind for me. All right, so I'll show you how to actually figure out how much flight time is on the drone. So first things first, power on the controller, power on the drone. So once everything's powered on, I will show you where to find it and how to actually sync it up so that you get up-to-date information. So if the person is accessing their flight screen, this is what it'll look like. You'll get the video overlay right here. And what you wanna do is you actually wanna press the back button in the top left corner, which will take you back to this screen here. Now from here, you can click on profile and in the left-hand side, bottom left, it will say more, but it tells you how many hours of flight time, the distance and how many flights you've had. Now this will be overall for this controller and it can be a little bit weird because for example like when I click on device management and I click to DJI Mini 3 Pro it's actually going to tell me zero for both now that's because I'm using a different controller this is actually the Mavic 3 controller and I've just decided to connect it up because I wanted to use this controller that's just something to keep in mind if they do have multiple controllers they need to make sure they've linked it up with the right one but in this scenario if I click on the DJI Mavic 3 you can see the flight distance is 99.4 kilometers flight time is 7. 
6.21 hours. So you just want to know those two key pieces of information, the flight distance and the flight time. Both are really good to know. And if you go back in the bottom left corner, you can press more. And then this is where you'll see all the flight data. And if you go down to settings and go to sync flight data, just make sure that it's auto sync flight record. So you just want to make sure that it's up to date. Device manager, click on the product and then it will pop up if it is the right controller. For most people, they only own the one drone. So for those people you're seeing, they probably only own the Mini 3 Pro and they're just gonna sell the controller with it. So in that scenario, just keep it in mind. But just imagine it is the DJI Mavic 3, for example. That's exactly what you need to know. You wanna know the flight distance and the flight time. Make sure that they've updated it and it's synced and it will just let you know. So just get them to post that in the ad, in the listing, or just send it directly to you in a message. Another key thing to ask is making sure that you're meeting in a public area, especially just in terms of safety, right? Like you don't necessarily want to go to someone's property. If they've got a huge property, you don't know if they've got a bunch of dogs, for example, you don't know if they're even safe, right? So just make sure that you meet up in a public area. A park would make a lot of sense for a drone or somewhere near the waterfront or somewhere where it's just a nice open area, but there are still people around just for your own safety. But then on top of that, so then they can't give you an excuse not to fly the drone because you really want to see this thing in action. A big one to check here is the pre flight checklist, which is actually something that you can access through the drone. So once the drone's on, the controller's on, in the top left corner, it will actually let you know if there are any errors or warnings. Now, if it all is good, it should say takeoff permitted, but typically it will tell you like compass error or it'll say if something's overheating or it'll just give you some key information there. So you can actually tap on that menu and it will pull down almost like a logbook of all the errors. So typically when you power up the drone, you might see a few pop up because it goes through its initiation stage, initial whatever you want to call it. And then from there, it will go into letting you know if there's any errors or warnings. So as long as there's nothing popping up there, that's a really good indicator. But also this is really good to look at just to make sure because there might be some errors in there and you're going to pick it up if you check on that little pre-flight check there. So you've gone through the whole process of researching the drone, talking to the people, making sure that you, you know there's nothing flagged that they're telling you about in terms of damage, repairs, all that kind of stuff. Now you've finally got your hands on the drone itself. And before it even takes off, like I would suggest asking to have a look at it. Now, this is key really, because you can see a few things immediately just with the naked eye. So firstly, I would say just to inspect every single part of the drone, see if there's any like hairline fractures, because that could indicate that it has had an impact and maybe they're just telling you, no, it hasn't. So check out for any sort of hairline fractures, which will look like tiny little hairlines and it will just be like little almost chips in the body of the drone. So the arms are typically the ones to look for, because if the drone's going to hit, probably going to hit on the arm. So check that first. Make sure that you're like testing the mechanics of it, how it all folds and feels. I would say just gently moving the camera, making sure that there's no obstruction as you're moving the camera. Check all of the sensors. So check the actual camera sensor to make sure there's no cracks chipped in the actual camera sensor. If it's obstacle avoidance as well, check all those because they're little sensors. You want to make sure that they haven't been cracked or anything. They might be smudged. So just gently wipe it on your shirt or take a microfiber cloth. Now the next thing to check is the motor. Now you can just do this freehand and these are brushless motors. So that means that there should not be any sort of resistance. Now if there's drag or resistance, that means that possibly there's a bunch of debris. There could be sand in there. There could be dirt in the actual motors. In this little section here, you might find that there's some form of issue with the actual motor itself. So in that case, that's something you need to be aware of because at some point the motor will fail. It will overheat or it just will have an issue and you will have to send it in for repair. That's one of the issues I've had. I've actually had, you're like forcing it almost. And when it hit that point, I actually had to send it in because it was going to basically fail on me at any moment. So just keep that in mind. Do they spin freely? Do they feel like there's no resistance in them? That's a really good, easy check to be aware if there's any debris built up in the motors. Check out the controller as well. That's always a good one. You know, controllers typically can handle really anything I find, <laughs> but just see. If there's any sort of like chips on the screen, make sure that it actually has the little like the control thumbsticks on the back or underneath typically they'll be. So make sure that you can see them, see for any sort of damage. I would suggest actually before the drone's even powered on, just feeling the sticks, seeing how much pushback they have. There might be a bit of resistance in them, but just make sure that they're springy. That's kind of how I'd describe it, especially with this controller with the DJI RC. It's got more of a springy feel to it. Other controllers will feel slightly different. Check all the buttons, test them out, push them. And again, this 
is just doing a thorough test before you've even launched the drone, just to make sure that everything on face value looks great. Because straight when the drone's up in the air, you're gonna be overwhelmed and not know what to look for. The next thing on the drone is making sure that the battery is not bloating. Now, what you're looking for here, firstly, is that it inserts nice and smoothly. There should not be any resistance with that. It should just be a perfect fit every single time. There should be no issues with that. If you're finding that you're like really trying to force it out, or if you're pushing it in and you're struggling to get it in, just visually check the battery. You wanna see if it is bloating in any way, you will probably start seeing it cracking a little bit out of the actual shell. You'll start noticing the shell will be expanding. Different things will be very clear. If there's sort of any issues there, you might notice like even burn marks where the terminals are. Some of it can be quite subtle, but for something like that, what I mentioned, you will notice the actual plastic expanding and these little points here will start to open up a little bit. You might notice some burn marks. So just a good one to look at visually and also to make sure that it slots in without any resistance because that's a sign that the battery is not bloating and hopefully you're not gonna have any issues with it moving forward. I have mentioned this in my tips and settings video, so I will have it pop up on the screen, but there are a few different ways to check the battery health and also battery levels. So when you're on the flight menu in the top right corner, you will see the battery percentage. If you click on that, it'll give you some information about when to land, when to bring it back, all that kind of stuff, when the battery is completely depleted, really good stuff to know. And then through the settings, there's more like an advanced battery info. And this is where it'll let you know the health of the cells basically, and also how many charges it's gone through and all that kind of stuff. So definitely check that as well while you're out there. And so you've done all of these thorough checks and I know it might sound like overkill, but if you're spending a couple of grand on a drone, even a grand, it's a lot of money, right? A thousand bucks for a lot of people is a lot of money and we don't all have that kind of money to spend. So just be careful, right? It's not like one of those things that you should rush. Just make sure and the person will understand. They'll understand that you're making sure that it's all fine and operational. And if they're legit, they won't care, right? Because they've got nothing to hide. So the next thing to say is to actually fly the drone. Now, whether they'll let you fly it or whether they'll want to fly it, obviously that's something you can negotiate. Ideally, you want to fly it yourself and just briefly see a few different things. So once the drone has been launched, you wanna listen out. Now this sounds like a very random one, but honestly, you can hear so much when you listen to a drone, even if you haven't flown a drone before, but you will notice a difference. It will kind of sound a little off. It will sound like a high pitch whining sound. Could be something to do with the motors having issues and just watch the behavior of the drone. So this is the next one. Just see how it behaves. A drone from DJI should just hover. Most of those expensive drones are just gonna hover and hold their position. If you're noticing that it's moving a lot, it's really struggling, it's changing altitude, that's not a good sign. You don't want that at all. So you really wanna make sure that it's just hovering. Be aware that on windy days, it will move a little bit, but typically it's gonna stay roughly in the same point. Even if it's blowing like that, it should try to keep its same position. So just make sure that that's happening and make sure that all the satellites are connected on the controller and that there's no error messages popping up. Now, the next one to be aware of is just making sure that you've got the thumbsticks in and you're just trying some of the inputs. So increase in altitude, decrease, do some kind of like little panning and tilting, just test it. Make sure that it's responsive. You don't want any major delay because that's again, not a good indicator, but just make Make sure that it's responsive and that it seems to be working. Have a brief look through the different settings if you want to make sure that it's got the resolution you want and that kind of stuff. You should have done that in the research step, but just this is where you get a chance to really see if there's anything that you're missing out on here or if there are any sort of red flags that you need to be aware of. Pretty much everything you need to know before buying yourself a secondhand drone. I know it sounds like quite a thorough checklist, but I just wanted to put this out there because a lot of people, like I said, will pick up a drone from me and they just won't research it, right? They just won't even like test it too much. And like, luckily I'm legit and luckily I'm selling a drone that hasn't crashed or it's in great condition or whatever. But you know, you just gotta be aware of these things. Make sure that you're looking into it, you're asking those questions, you're checking all those things I mentioned, because that could be the difference between your drone crashing and you having a drone that's actually gonna be reliable and will last you for a very long time. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. Send it to a friend, send it to someone who's looking to get a secondhand drone, because hopefully this will help them as well. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.